Shri Guru Bionama. Welcome to our 26th online weekly cultural heritage of Kashmir series. Today's lecture is by Dr. Anushil Munshi, Ishwar Ashram Trust on Saivacharya Swami Lakshman Ju Maharaj and his monumental role in revival of Kashmir Saivaism. Let's begin with a prayer song by Sai Prasad Shankara. Sai is a disciple of Srimati Ambika Sri Khan. Ambika Ji was on our last program. Sai has been learning Carnatic music for the past six years. He regularly participates in bhajan, kirti recitals, varnam competitions. He is a student in class 11. He plays Carnatic keyboard, harmonium, and also into black belt first in karate. Over to you, uh, Sai Prasad. Namaskaram, Sri Guru Namaha. I am really blessed to. Uh, I am really blessed that I'm. I have been given this opportunity. Namaskaram to my Guru Sri Mati Ambika Sri Khan. Susi Manta Venim Drisha Nijitainim Ramatki Ravani Namadvajrapani. Susi Manta Venim Drisha Nijitainim Ramatki Ravani Namadvajrapani. Sudha Manta Rasyam Udha Chintya Veni Bhaje Saradamba Ajasram Adamba Sudha Manta Rasyam Udha Chintya Veni Bhaje Saradamba Ajasram Adamba Sushantam Sudeham Drigante Kachanta Lasat Salatangi manantama chintya Sushantam sudeham drigante kachanta Lasat salatangi manantama chintya Sutam tapa say sanga purva stitam ta Baje saradamba Ajasram madamba Sutam tapa se sanga purva stitam ta baje saradam ba ajasram madam ba Urange turange mrigendre kagendre marale madebe mahokshe diruda Urange turange mrigendre kagendre marale madebe Mahokshe diruda Mahatyam navamya sada samarupam baje saradamba ajasram madamba Mahatyam navamya sada samarupam baje saradamba ajasram madamba Namaskaram, Sri Guru Bhyarana. Thank you, Sai Prasad. Our speaker, Dr. Anushil Munshi, is a member of the Governing Council of uh, Ishwar Ashram Trust, founded by Saivacharya Swami Lakshmanju Maharaj, the last Saiva master in an unbroken chain of masters of Kashmir Saivaism tradition. Dr. Anushil Ji, senior radiation oncologist at Delhi, as a unique distinction of getting trained and working at the best centers in India, including the Tata Meter Memorial Hospital, Mumbai, All India Institute of Medical Sciences and Postgraduate Institute of Medical Education and Research, Chandigarh. He has the experience of radiotherapy treatment with the most advanced and precise techniques. He was additional director in the Department of Radiation Oncology at Fortis Memorial Research Institute Associate Professor, Department of Radiation Oncology, Tata Memorial Hospital, Mumbai, and holds several professional memberships. As always, we thank Sri Kanchi Mutt for our ongoing initiative and offer our namaskarams to His Holiness, Sri Shankara Vijayendra Saraswati Swamikal. 
with his blessings, we continue with our Kashmir cultural heritage awareness lectures. Shri Kanchi Mutt has always been in the forefront, modestly working with the sole aim of national integration, spiritual enlightenment, and spreading the uniqueness as Kashmir is our cultural heritage. We are now very pleased to request Shri Anushilji to take over. Please go ahead. Thank you, Pranam, Jai Gurudev, everyone. With the permission of our Gurudev, His Holiness Shaivacharya Swami Lakshmanju Maharaj, and bowing to his holy feet, I begin today's talk. Shri Guru Padnaka Janma, Janman the Syapi Prakash and Artha, Sergei Tikopi Vikasa, Prakash Mano, Namachinna Alambe Jagatalambam, Heram Bacharanam Bujam, Shushante Yatrijas Parshat, Sada Pratyu Varde. So, over the next 30 or 40 minutes, I shall be talking about the great master Shavacharya Swami Lakshmanju Maharaj our Gurudev, our dear Gurudev, and his monumental role in the revival of Kashmir Shaiva philosophy. It was many, many years ago in Kashmir, there lived a very pious and a noble family. Pandit Narayan Das Raina and his wife Srimati Arnimal Raina. Both were, both belonged to a very well off family and they were extremely devoted to their own spiritual master Swami Ramji Maharaj. The family owned several establishments, including a big carpet factory. They were also pioneers for building houseboats in Kashmir. Pandit Narayan Das Raina was the first to venture and he was the first to build houseboats in Kashmir. And besides that, they had several other business enterprises. They had several houses too, but the one that they used uh, on a day-to-day -day basis was the family house at Namchabal Fateh Adal, Srinagar, Kashmir. Swamiji, our Gurudev, Shaivacharya Swami Lakshmanju Maharaj, he was born on 9th of May 1907 at Namchabal, Srinagar. At this time, uh, as I was saying, the master of his parents, Swami Ramji Maharaj, who was himself an accomplished Shaiva master at that time itself, and somehow he was not keeping good health at that time, but still, when he heard the news of, of the birth of the young Lakshmana, he got up in ecstasy and said in Kashmiri, Jai 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 Devki Nandane, Gatsaj the Gasha of Chane Zane, which means be glory to you, of son of Devki. Be the greatest glory to you because all darkness has disappeared and light is shining forth with your birth. And Swamiji was the sixth child in a household that had four boys and five girls. In 1913, Swamiji was six years old, and this is the picture of that time. He and his brothers underwent the Brahman initiation, the thread ceremony, or the Yagnopavit, as it is called. And at that time, Swami Ramji Maharaj was also there, and he blessed this occasion. This is a picture of Swami Ramji Maharaj, who was the Grand Master of Swami Lakshmanju Maharaj. 
Now, Swami Lakshmanju Maharaj began his spiritual quest and his spiritual journey at a very, very young age. Maybe at the since the time of birth itself, but definitely around four or five years of age when he was. In fact, his first, uh, just to give you an, the uh, snapshot of the aura that was there in the entire family, his own brother also, besides his parents who were so much spiritually inclined, his elder brother Sri Maheshwarnath Rena was also a very dedicated, devoted person to Swami Ramji Maharaj and he was doing his sadhana, his practice on a day-to-day -day basis. And inquisitively, the five-year-old Lakshmana asked his elder brother, what are you doing? I see you every evening, night, you are sitting in a posture and you are concentrating on something, but what exactly are you doing? Please tell me, I want, I'm very curious to know. And his elder brother told him, I am doing the practice as has been advised by my master, Swami Ramji Maharaj. So he said, what, what, what is that? What should I do? He said, his brother said, just concentrate on the tip of your nose. And young Lakshmana did that and he went into some kind of a depth in an ocean of nothingness. And so... This was the extent of uh, the spiritual enlightenment or richness that Swamiji already had since his birth. So much so that after a while of practice, after a few months, both of both brothers were again in the same room. And the young Lakshmana told his elder brother, dear brother, can you see the Lord? He's standing, standing on that, in that corner. His brother could not see anything. He said, where, where? And then Lakshmana said, he's playing the flute. Can't you see him? So this happened for a few minutes. And his elder, elder brother was a bit disappointed because he had been doing practice for years, for several years. And here, his younger brother, after just a few weeks or months of practice, was saying that he's seeing the Lord. So he went to his master, Swami Ramji Maharaj, and asked him what is happening. And then Swami Ramji Maharaj told Swami Ji's elder brother, Sri Maheshwarath, no, this boy, your younger brother, Lakshmana, is a, is a realized soul. He's meant to be fully realized in this birth. The young Lakshmana used to make his favorite uh, sports, you can call, where to make a Shivalingam and pray. And while doing his practice or his meditation, he would later on say that I, I, I experienced something which was bigger than the biggest, greater than the greatest and higher than the highest. And this he termed as body board. This is a Kashmiri term, which, which means greater, the, the greater than the greatest, body board. There are numerous tales and numerous incidents which happened during his childhood and it would be difficult to present each one of them. I'm just presenting one of these incidents when Swamiji was in school and while in school he used to tell his friends there is no need to do physical training and physical exercises and this thing. Let us all sit together. Let us do meditation. And when he told this others and they used to collectively sit together and everything, the teacher saw and Swamiji was given a punishment of 25 canes. And lo and behold, the next day the teacher fell ill and his illness lasted exactly 25 days. Now, 
during this time, Swamiji, the young Lakshmana, still under 10, he started experiencing some fainting spells. Now, these fainting spells were very concerning to his family because they thought perhaps is it some kind of an epilepsy or some disorder or some mental disorder that our dear son is having. And so naturally they took him to their own master, Swami Ramji Maharaj. So Swami Ramji Maharaj, when he saw the young Lakshmana, he said, okay, you sit before me and you do the same meditation that you are doing at home and after which you are falling or fainting, do the same thing. So young Lakshmana sat in that posture and Swami Ramji himself sat for meditation and both of them went into the state of meditation at the same time. After a few minutes, Swami Ramji opened his eyes, which were brimming with joy and happiness. And he told his parents, this is no illness. Let me have this illness. This is a glorified illness. This is all glory. May God give me this illness. So after that, the family was more reassured and uh, more relaxed. Before leaving his mortal frame, Swami Ramji had already made arrangements for Lakshmana's spiritual journey. He delegated the responsibility to one of his senior most disciples, Swami Mahatab Kagji, which who became the master of Swami Lakshmanju Maharaj very soon. So it was in 1924 when Swamiji was 17 years old. He received initiation from his guru, Swami Mehtab Kag. This was done at Mangleshwar Bhairav Temple. The temple still exists in Kashmir. And Swamiji soon commenced the study of Sanskrit grammar with Maheshwar Rajdan, another very well-known scholar. Now, I should also tell you at this time that while making this presentation, I did try uh, to present to you uh, two sections. One of the life of Swamiji Maharaj, Swami Lakshmanji Maharaj, and second aspects related to Kashmir Shaivism. But as I was making this presentation, I realized that it's an impossible task to do it because both Swamiji's life and Kashmir Shaivism are sides, two sides of the same coin. You can't separate them. They are so intermixed with each other. And Swamiji's life itself, every minute and every second of his life, he was living example of Kashmir Shaivism. In 1926, when he was 19 years old, he left home and he went to Sadhu Ganga because at this time he wanted seclusion. He wanted seclusion and he was asking his parents to give him some space some separate house where he could stay, where he could meditate because he wanted to be away from the household. And his father, like most of uh, the fathers in the world, wanted that his son should stay with him. So perhaps for that reason, he ignored his son's request. But Swamiji was very keen. He left his home, went to Sadhu Ganga. It's again a very, very spiritual place in Srinagar. And he stayed there for uh, 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 one to two months and he came back only on the insistence of his master Swami Mehtab Kagji and then went to stay with his master in Chandpura. This is a photograph of 1931 of Chandpura, Kashmir. In the center is his master Swami Mehtab Kagji and by the side is the young Lakshmana. Swamiji was undergoing intense uh, study of theoretical aspects of Kashmir Shaivism as well as doing his meditative practice. Just at the age of 26, and it was the year 1933, 
Swamiji edited and published the Sanskrit version of Gita, Gita Samgraha of Abhinav Gupta, the Bhagavad Gita, which was written by Abhinav Gupta. And Swamiji did his, its, his commentary on this book. Very soon, uh, Swamiji asked his father to find some place for him where he could build a house and Swamiji could stay there and do his practice and meditate. And Swamiji's preference was that this place should be away from the main city. So very close to Ishbar and this Ishbar is a place close to the Nishat Mughal garden. Uh, Swamiji, Swamiji's father built, purchased a piece of land in very scenic surroundings. It was very at the foot of a mountain surrounded by trees and a stream flowing through the plot of land. And a house was built there and Swamiji moved to this house and he lived in this house from 1930 to 1960. Nineteen forties, the decade of nineteen forties had some unfortunate happenings. In nineteen forty-two, Swami Mehtab Kagji left his mortal frame, his master Swami Mehtab Kag, to become one with the Supreme. Nineteen forty-seven, Swamiji's mother Srimati Arnimal left for her heavenly abode. Nineteen forty-eight. Swamiji's father, Pandit Narayan Dasji, he left for his heavenly abode. So this entire decade, a series of events. And after this, Swamiji dedicated, and I, I would like to mention here that in spite of his spiritual inclinations and his pursuits of spiritualism, Swamiji did not abdicate or ignore his worldly duties. He took utmost care, of course, of his master, his spiritual master, during his later years when he was not well physically. And also of his parents. He took extreme, extreme care of his parents during the last years of their li earthly lives, when they were not well, when they were not keeping well. He used to personally attend to them. They had several servants. But Swamiji made it a point to do everything for his parents himself to the last and the minutest detail and the smallest thing. The place where the ashram where Swamiji's, uh, uh, the, uh, the, it was located, the ashram, was a bit away from uh, the main road. It was a steep uphill climb and Swamiji realized that many of his devotees some of them were elderly also, were not able to easily make it to that ashram. So he decided to move his ashram to a more accessible place. And this more accessible place was more close to the main road. And this was very close to the older ashram, although again, a very scenic environment. And he lived here from 1960 to 1991 when he attained his Mahasamadhi. So this ashram complex, he later also built the Amriteshwar Bhairav temple, the Parbhairav Dham. And in, Swamiji was also duly served by several of his disciples and devotees, and many of whom came on a regular basis to learn Kashmiri Shaivism from them, from him. And amongst them were also Sushri Sharikaji and Sushri Prabhaji, who used to stay in that ashram, who were residents of that ashram, and they wholeheartedly studied Kashmiri Shaivism under the feet of Swami Lakshmanju Maharaj. And besides that, there were several other devotees and scholars. So the interesting thing was 
Now look at the contrast. On one hand, there was a group of devotees, many of whom used to come regularly, were devoted to Swamiji Maharaj, but because of their limited intellectual capabilities, had difficulties understanding Kashmiri Shaivism. So often they used to come to Swamiji, take his blessings, present to him their daily problems, whether it was a child who was not performing well in school, whether a surrounding village person whose cow was not giving enough milk. So very uh, simple or trivial problems which perhaps uh, one could imagine. And on the other hand, so on one hand where this group of people and devotees and on the other hand where accomplished saints, scholars and such group of people who came to Swamiji because either they uh, wanted some clarification regarding some spiritual aspect or there was some spiritual text that they were writing and they were having difficulty in finishing that. And Swamiji was equally at ease with everyone. And he could come down to the level of any person in the audience to explain to him or to make him comfortable or to sort out his domestic affair or to sort out his spiritual affair or to sort out his scholarly affair. Swamiji was there for everyone. And you can see a snapshot of many uh, accomplished scholars, Dr. Jaydev Singh, who came to Swamiji to understand a few texts, Alexis Sanderson from Oxford, uh, and other accomplished saints who would regularly visit Swamiji's ashram, Swami Muktananda, Maharshi Mahesh Yogi, Swami Rama. This is a picture of uh, the uh, Varanasi, Sampurananda University, where there was a big meeting uh, of, it was an international meeting. And Swamiji was invited to this event and he presented aspects of Kundalini, which were extremely well appreciated by all the scholars that were there. And he was subsequently awarded the Doctor of Letters. Sundays were an important event in the ashram calendar every Sunday. Now Swamiji specifically kept Sunday as the day where, where devotees and everyone could come and visit the ashram because he felt that this was the day. Many of the devotees were actually uh, working in government service or in other areas. So he felt that this would be a day when they could come and uh, be in the ashram and study Kashmir Shaivism and he taught everyone uh, religiously in Kashmiri language on Sundays, then in English language on other days. So every group uh, had a designated day. And uh, Sundays were especially vibrant because the entire Kashmiri community used to be there, all, the, all his devotees and uh, an afternoon session studies followed by tea. And then Swamiji would say a good a bye to all the devotees who had come to his ashram till the next Sunday when they came again. Birthdays were another very, very important event in the yearly ashram calendar, Swamiji's birthday. And this was also the day when Swamiji used to meditate in the open. This was the only time when Swamiji meditated in front of everyone for three or four hours. And the entire day was full of so many activities followed by the birthday puja, 
followed by a meal which was served for thousands of people and then Swamiji would personally distribute prasad to each one. Personally, he would give prasad to everyone who had come on his birthday and followed by an evening of dance. And so it was a very, very divine, blissful event. Following the next day after the birthday, another interesting event used to happen where Swamiji used to distribute. I think he would be uh, distributing more than 90% of what was there in his room or the adjacent store area to the devotees, taking everyone's name one by one and uh, giving whatever bed sheets, perfumes, whatever he had, whatever gifts or something devotees had brought, all would be distributed. And then thus he exemplified Aparigraha or non-holding. So each of his actions, as I was saying, there was a message Holding is not good. And this is one of the principles, as we all know, of yams and niyams, which again Swamiji taught in great detail. And that's why I'm saying that he led by example. Uh, whether it was vegetarianism, whether it was uh, truthfulness, in each aspect he was a shining example of what should be done. Several religious trips were organized, whether it was to Haridwar, Lakshman, Jula with the group of devotees or many, many other locations as well. I'm just uh, skipping uh, quite a few details in between because that would take a lot of time. Now, all his life, Swamiji kept himself at a very mundane level at a very low level. Sometimes he used to, in a group or a meeting, he used to say, what do I know? I don't know anything. I mean, we are all learning, aren't we? So this was the kind of status he had kept for himself throughout his lifetime. But in 1989, there was some intense spiritual transformation that happened. And he said that I have merged in the state of Parbhairava. It was a very unusual thing for Swamiji to say something of that sort. But I think the intensity of the experience was that that perhaps it was uh, uncontrollable and unimaginable. In 1991, 27th September, Swamiji attained the ultimate state of Mahasamadhi. And before that, he said these golden words. When I finally vacate this body, you should weep externally, but only for the sake of others. For my sake, you should rejoice. As henceforth, I, should, I shall remain eternally in the lap of Shiva. I also want to present uh, to you this the experience in dream that a devotee had, and he has penned it down so beautifully. And this happened after Swamiji's Mahasamadhi. In a dream, he writes, and I quote, In a dream, I saw a multitude of celestial figures. They were not clear, but still luminous. A vague light lighted the sky, though no source was visible. The figures were still, full of expectation and reverence. Then the scene disappeared and I heard a voice. And thousands of gods gathered to welcome great Lakshmanju to his true abode. And thousands of Dundubis resounded in the sky. It was something like this. Or Akash me Hazaru Dundubiyu ka Nard Gunjuta, referring to the sound of thousands of hourglass drums. I now switch gears a bit and I shall uh, talk about. Uh, the evolution of Kashmir Shaivism or the history of Kashmir Shaivism starting from Lord Shiva Swachandanatha. We all know Satyuga, Trita Yuga, Dwapar Yuga. So in these yugas, masters and disciples were initiated verbally. 
the power of memory was extremely well developed. There were no written notes. Whatever the master said, the disciple would immediately, it would get enshrined in his brain and forever. But with the onset of Kaliuga, masters and disciples became disappointed. They hid themselves from the worldly people and theory of Kashmir Shaivism kind of became lost a bit. Now, with the onset of Kaliuga, which is something around 5,000 years ago, Lord Shiva reappeared in the form of Sri Kanthanatha, who initiated this Durvasa sage. And in turn, Durvasa sage created four mind-born children, Trimbaknatha, Amartaknath, Srinath, and Ardhitrambaka. And each of them were initiated in a particular monistic, dualistic, monodualistic, and monistic tradition. Then there was a series of 15 generations of mind-born children. Mind-born. They were just born with the power of mind. The 15th sage married a noble lady in Kashmir. And then was born Sangma Ditya, then Varsha Ditya, Aruna Ditya, Anand, Somanandanatha, around 8th century AD. Somanandanatha at 8th century AD, there were two very, very important things that happened at this time. One, Somanandanatha started the Guru Shishya Parampara or tradition from the earlier father to son tradition. And he also started the practice of written scriptures, starting with Shiv Drishti and the beautiful shloka of Shiv Drishti, Asma Drupa Samavishta, Swatma Natma Nivarani, Shiva Karotu Nijyanama Shakti By the 8th century, this system became known as Kashmir Shaivism and this distinguished it from other schools of Shaivism. These were the reasons why it was named Kashmir Shaivism. So Somanandanatha, then Utpal Deva, Lakshman Gupta, and then the great Acharya Abhinav Gupta, Chemiraja, then Yogaraj, then again some unknown saints for 800 years, then Swami Manakakji, Swami Ramji Maharaj, Swami Mehtapkakji Maharaj, and Swami Shavacharya Swami Lakshman Ji Maharaj. Now, where did these masters live? Now, again, often we talk about Kashmir and we talk about, we think about a beautiful tourist destination where you can go in summer and spend some time and come back. But please remember that Kashmir is all, is actually one of the most holiest places around the world. Most of these ancient Kashmir Shaiva masters lived here. And this range, the Mahadev mountain, where you have the Shiva rock, where Vasugupta saw the Shiva sutras inscribed on the rocks. We all know that story. This, it's in the same area. Acharya Abhinav Gupta, where he dwelt, including Gopitis, it's in the same area. And no wonder Swamiji's ashram was also in the same area. So it was not just a mere coincidence. Another reason for the name Kashmir Shaivism, King Lalita Ditya of Kashmir traveled to Antarvedi, Madhya Pradesh, in India. There he discovered the great Shaiva teacher Atri Gupta. The king invited Atri Gupta to Kashmir. And after some centuries, Varaha Gupta was born in the house of Atri Gupta. Varaha Gupta had a son named Narsim Gupta. And Narsim Gupta later married and had a son who was the great Shaiva master Acharya Bhida. Kashmir Shaivism is known as the pure Trika system. So once Swamiji was asked, what is Trika? It was a radio interview and a team from Radio Kashmir had come to his ashram. And he told them that this entire world and everything in this world is in a threefold way. And everything is actually Trika. And the philosophy of Kashmir Shaivism is meant for anyone in this world without caste, creed, color, or gender. The philosophy of Kashmir, the Andhistrika philosophy is at the heart of that supreme energy of God consciousness and it teaches that this entire objective world. Now, this is a very interesting and an important statement. That this entire objective world, what we see around us, 
is not separate from God consciousness. And that is why Acharya Abhinav Gupta also states that beautiful shloka which was narrated by Swamiji often, very often. Ashanam tasyogam sakaratam upagatam jagatrupatyavande pratyaksham bhairavam vapu. I bow to this world itself because what is this world? This world is a coagulated form of that same God consciousness of Lord Shiva. This world is a solidified form, that coagulated form of that God consciousness. And to realize that this that God is not situated in some seventh heaven, but in your own self. And so beautifully put by Gurudev Maharaj, God and individual are one. A very profound statement. God and individual are one. And to realize this is the essence of Kashmir Shaivism. So I can't go into the details of all aspects. Neither I am a scholar, neither I have the qualifications to do that. But I'm just telling you an overview of the seminal features of Kashmir Shaivism. 36 elements from Earth to Shiva. Concept of Swatantra, complete freedom. Concept of Pratibhimbavad, theory of reflection. Concept of Trika philosophy, threefold aspect of universe, universe, four schools of thought. And two complementary Gyanas, the Bodh Gyana and the Purush Gyana. So Bodh Gyana, the intellectual knowledge, scholarly knowledge, and the Purush Gyana or the meditative experience that, that one has. So both need to be there fully present. And then only one has the Jivan Mukta state. I was talking about Trika. So some examples of Trika or the threefold way. Jagrat Swapna Sushipti. Par para par apar, Ida Pingla Sushumna, Aghor Ghor Ghoratri, Bhunada Kalada Tattada, Shambhopai Shaktopai Anopai. And then finally, and many more examples, but then one of the beautiful examples is Nar Shakti Shivatma Kamtaka. Nar Shakti and Shiva. There are four schools of thought in Kashmir Shaivism. All lead, please note this. All lead to the same final destination. Each school of thought. Pratibhigna school, Kula school, Krama school, Spanda school. They were each of them were founded by a different master. For example, Pratibhigna, Somananda, 8th century AD. It focused on recognizing your own nature, recognition. Kula, Sri Machandanatha, 5th century AD. Live in totality. Totality. Rise from lowest to high, highest degree. Krama, Erakanatha, 7th century AD. Succession based. And it's female predominant. Spanda, I was mentioning about the Shiva rock. Which, and the sutras discovered by Acharya Vasugupta. Uh, believes, this school believes that nothing can exist without movement. Everything is in the state of Spanda. Everything in this world. The picture of Acharya Abhinav Gupta. A great scholar who practiced the philosophy of Kashmir Shaivism. He was a shining jewel in the illustrious chain of masters from Sage Ruasa to Shaivacharya Swami Lakshmanji. Brilliant student, blessed with supernatural talent. Wrote books on several things. Kashmir Shaivism, music, art, drama, poetry. Extremely de de devoted, dedicated and extremely hard working. Learned from several masters. Composed the entire Tantra Loka, which is a master text of Kashmir Shaivism in just around 37 days or so. Composed Tanta Lok, Tanta Sar, Parmat Sar, Paratam Shkavivarna, Ishwapatika Vritti and Vritti Vimarshani and commentary on Bhagavad Gita, Gita Gita Samgraha. And teaching of Acharya Bhagavata, he held the view that Lord's message is universal and eternal. There are no earthly restrictions to it. And self-awareness is indeed awareness of one's own self. Awareness of our own self is the key to self-realization. There is no other key. This is the only key. And as Swamiji Maharaj, our Gurudev, used to reiterate time and again, please be aware of your own self. Whether you are walking, whether you are talking, whether you are going to office, doing your 
mundane work activities this that playing sports he said be aware of your own self because this is the supreme practice the other beautiful thing that kashmir shaivism tells especially relevant for present day generation is that one as i said it can be practiced doing whatever you are doing you don't need to uh, sit in one corner and do it and then come out and start your daily work so it it is part and parcel of your daily, daily work there is no need to renounce the world because what will you renounce as i said world is a manifestation of god so can you renounce god what will you do so world is part and parcel of god and you have to do everything i live here nothing to renounce and therefore also it can be effectively practiced by householders married people there is no restriction at all i also want to take a, a little bit of time and tell you about the kashmir series of texts a very very important series of texts which were published by, uh, by a committee set up by maharaja pratap singh on the request of swami ram ji maharaj maharaja pratap singh of chenki was the devotee of swami ram ji maharaj and he got instructions from swami ram ji maharaj to set up a committee for this uh, revival of these books which were getting lost many kashmir series of texts very very critical important and important text and there is also an important thing because this material would be very soon needed by swami ranju maharaj he was just uh, crossing his teens and these books were coming to him at that time so look at the timing and these helped him immensely understanding the theoretical aspects of kashmir shaivism and he did intense academic and spiritual practice in 1920s and 1930s snapshot of the kashmir series of texts so as i said shaivacharya swami lakshman ji maharaj accomplished saint accomplished shaiva scholars revived the fading philosophy of kashmir shaivism gave intense lectures in extensive lectures and revelations not in one language in several languages hindi english kashmiri more than 1000 hours of his rec audio recordings and video recordings are available there is one very very important difference between what way he has revealed and the other philosophers and scholars because his revelations are based on his own state of enlightenment bliss and experience he tutored several scholars from the west as i said alexis sanders and william selburn mark dickoski john hugh george several from india and adjacent regions jaydev singh acharya ameshwar ja neel kankur b n pandit ml kuklu often we ask a take home message from presentation so if there is a take home message from this presentation i would like to read this very very important note that was written by swami ji maharaj ar gurudev early in the morning for all of you this is the title early in the morning for all of you sit motionless do not grumble of bad environments create your own mental world and environments build up your character properly establish virtuous healthy habits understand the glory splendor and power of god who is at the back of your mind thoughts will and memory keep your body strong and healthy through regular exercise become a spiritual hero shut out the doors of the senses very important still the thoughts emotions and feelings sit motionless and calm in the early morning hours have a receptive attitude go along with god enjoy peace in the silence and of course be aware of your own self yoga in action it was because of swamiji's efforts untiring efforts 
several books came out of his revelations in English, in Hindi. These are all available with the Ishwar Ashram Trust. The Universal Shiva Fellowship, led by John Hughes, has done a commendable job. They initially, during Swamiji's lifetime, meticulously recorded Swamiji's lectures. And since Swamiji's Mahasamadhi have been regularly publishing books, many of us would be aware of the publications, the latest one being the Tantra Loka 2, dealing with chapters 2 and 3 of Tantra Loka, Anika 2 and 3. Ishwar Ashram Trust came into existence in 1991 by virtue of will of Swamiji Maharaj. Initially, the ashram was at Srinagar. But during the last two decades, ashrams in Jammu, Delhi, Mumbai, and Bangalore have been established. Seminars and workshops on Kashmir Shaivism are held time to time by Ishwar Ashram Trust. These are the snapshots of the Kendras of Ishwar Ashram Trust. Kashmir, Mumbai, Bangalore, New Delhi, Jammu. Several books have been published, CDs, DVDs on Kashmir Shaivism, and the list is available on our website. We also publish a quarterly journal on Kashmir Shaivism, the only journal of its kind, I think, in the entire world, maybe, dedicated to Kashmir Shaivism. Malini derives its name from the Matrika and the Malini, the theory of letters. And we know the super messy of Malini, and that's why this journal has been named Malini. There is a 24 by 7 online radio with continuous lectures of Swamiji on Kashmir Shaivism going on our website. This is a snapshot of several issues of the Malini. A few of sayings of Guru Maharaj. And a snapshot of the previous workshops or seminars on Kashmir Shaivism by Ishwar Ashram Trust. For the past several years, we have been doing these workshops, these seminars at several locations, Delhi, Srinagar, uh, Mumbai, Bangalore, and other areas of the country. And we invite eminent scholars to be with us to discuss important texts of Kashmir Shaivism in New Delhi before the COVID era, before the pandemic. We used to have a week long in house residential course in the month of December. Hopefully, we'll be able to start these courses very soon again. But uh, I'm just presenting you a snapshot of 2019. 2019, because after that, we have been, it's not that we have not been having sessions after 2019, but they have been kind of online sessions. So 2019 was the last year where we, we had actual uh, physical face to face seminars and events. So we had an event, two day event in Pune. We had essay competition for children on Kashmir Shaivism. We had a seminar in Kathmandu also in 2019. We had a three-day shiver on Parapraveshika at Baruj, Gujarat, week-long workshop on Sri Tantra Loka, Anika. As I was saying, this was a week-long in New Delhi. And since 2019, as I was saying, the, we have been, we have kind of switched to the online mode as most of us have done. And updates of these and other events are there on the Ishwarasham Trust website. Upcoming, the biography, the detailed biography of Shavacharya Swami Lakshmanji Maharaj will be out very soon. A short version is available already for past several years, but a detailed one, a very uh, one with his, which has meticulous details, much, much more details that, than what I have told in my presentation today. Then there is a video documentary, an hour long video documentary that will be coming out very soon. The Gurustuti book, the Gurustuti was a book initially composed by Acharya Rameshwar Jha, who had come from Varanasi to meet Swamiji. And he became then a, a disciple of Gurudev. And he learned Kashmir Shaivism uh, under Gurudev. And as a token of his gratitude to his master, he composed the Gurustuti. And this Gurustuti now has 
acquired a bigger size and is now being presented with English and Hindi translations. Of course, uh, the other things are going on, online webinars, online on, and offline courses will start once the COVID situation improves. With that, thank you all for a very patient hearing and may Gurudev bless us all and take us on the path of self-realization with his blessings, which I know are there for everyone who desires to become self-realized. Thank you and Jai Gurudev. Jai Gurudev. Thank you, uh, doctor. Although you made a disclaimer that you are not a scholar, it looks like you must have done a lot of work amidst your oncology and other work and made a wonderful presentation. I think uh, StreamYard uh, presentation, the first time we have seen something like this, it is very nicely done. It's a new feature of uh, StreamYard. I just wanted to check with you, uh, admission to Ishwar Ashram Trust is possible during the visit. Anyone can just visit uh, the ashram yes. while at the Srinagar? Yes, yes. The only thing that you want you should do is that we have a list of numbers there on the website. So uh, please uh, contact those numbers and just tell them about the program that you want to come on which dates and stay for how long and they will tell you all the details and in case th someone is facing some issues you can always call me or send me a message very good good just wanted to ask you one question i think i must have seen that in the website uh it says unbroken chain of masters of kashmir cyber's so that is still continuing that Yes, so that's a very important question. So once Swamiji himself was asked during an interview that Swamiji, what will happen to this chain of masters after your Mahasamadhi? And Swamiji very clearly said that this chain will continue after I leave my body. I will ensure that this, there is someone who, who is there to carry forward this chain. I will ensure and Lord Shiva will ensure that masters are around to carry forward this philosophy of Kashmir Shaivism. So let us, uh, we have to believe what Gurudev said and I'm sure that there will be people to guide us, there will be masters to guide us in future as well. We already had two uh, glimpses on Kashmiri Sarisam by Virendra Kaziji and uh, your presentation now um, very detailed and we are going to have Abhinav Gupta also by Dr. Akshana Koku from the US. See, she's going to present sometime next month. So I think this chain is continuing and uh, we would visit the website and then as you mentioned, we'll keep in touch and like to explore this more. Um, you explain in very simple terms. One thing you mentioned is uh, that self-awareness while walking or uh, doing anything you do, that is just the self-awareness being. Swamiji was, Swamiji was very, very repeatedly he used to, if you hear his talks, uh, Kashmiri, you will not understand, but even in English and his books and this thing, Swamiji was very, very clear about the fact that it's not that you do something in your puja room, you do some prayer there, and then you come out and then you are in your world and that's it. He was very clear about the fact that if you are feeling aware while in office, that is a bigger prayer than what you are doing in your puja room. If you feel that intensity of awareness, uh, while doing some mundane work, while you are swimming or doing something else, that moment is a higher moment than if what you are doing in your puja room. So his basic message was that try to remain aware at all times. And he had he suggested some 
for for us and others everyone in this world very simple things like just watching the breath for example so uh, and uh, these are very simple things uh, apparently but once you start doing you will realize that you so often you forget you get lost in your world and but that is the effort i mean required of us if we want to progress on the path of realization that can that work on his message try to remain aware of our own selves because our own self is the highest thing in this universe as swami ji has said that god is not something that is there on the seventh sky he is there within each one of us whether it's the objective or the subjective world wonderful thank you so much for your time uh, doctor i'm sure uh, we'll stay in touch with you and uh, hope to see you again jai gurudev jai gurudev thank you for uh, uh, your presence today and as i mentioned earlier we have already covered on uh, kashmir uh, saivaisam uh, the instances of uh, one and two earlier and Virendra Kasi ji will also be appearing later, and we will have more sessions on this. As always, uh, please stay tuned to our uh, Saturday Kashmir Cultural Heritage Awareness Series, 7 to uh, 8 p.m., and we will be continuing for uh, some more time during this year. We have more speakers lined up. We would like to thank Kamukoti Da TV, uh, YouTube, and uh, facebook channels and also vdsp for all the streaming support we look forward to seeing you again next week same time thank you and jay jay shankar hare hare shankar